We talked about how most people couldn't afford to have a clock in their house. Eventually, the, uh, the craftsmen got better, the price of some materials went down, they realized if they didn't uh, make it out of gold and cover it with jewels, they could probably have a more affordable personal clock. Again, we're talking 16, 1700s here, when they were still expensive, but you started to see clocks that were affordable, perhaps at least in rich people's houses or uh, merchant class, middle class homes. This is an example of a, bra of a uh, nope, not a bracket clock, that's next. This is a lantern clock. This is actually a much later reproduction of a lantern clock, because I don't own one, they're rare and expensive. But this is the form they would take. Uh, the original ones would be about two or three times bigger than that. They would stand on a little shelf, and underneath would be uh, the weights, which would power the clock. There would be a bell up top, of course, it would ring out the hours. But these, uh, uh, these clocks began to appear in households. The form is so uh, interesting that now, uh, as in this case, reproductions of them were made. This is uh, a, a ticking model. Uh, it has uh, uh, kind of a basic French movement inside. You'll see more of these later when we talk about carriage clocks. But in this case, uh, you, can, uh, you can own a lantern clock form without having to pay for a, a museum-quality one from the 1700s.